As soon as we started getting our first looks at the new SNES Classic, almost immediately people noticed something similar between them that caused many to speculate. Did Nintendo simply put the NES Classic in a new shell and load different software? Not all that surprisingly, some early teardowns have already confirmed that the two appear to share the same, or at least a similar, motherboard. But for me, this just wasn't enough. I wanted to know, are the boards similar or identical? Did Nintendo manufacture new boards for the SNES Classic? Or did they make a bunch of boards all at once and flash different software on them? But my biggest question was, are they alike enough that if you wanted to, could you swap their boards and would they still work? So while the day after release of the SNES Classic would find most content playing their new toy, I had to tear mine apart. I do have to give major props to Nintendo here for how easy these are to take apart. At my job, I'm constantly tearing down computers, laptops, tablets, and phones, and typically the newer something is, the more difficult it is to service. It's almost like Nintendo wanted to duplicate how easy these things would have been to tear apart in the 80s and 90s. Actually, I would argue these are easier to service than the originals. So far at a glance, these boards look very similar. It's interesting how in the NES Classic they notch the board here to make it fit the case. And while that notch is no longer needed, it remains on the SNES Classic. So maybe the boards are identical, but they are still mostly hidden by their large heat sinks. Let's pull heat sinks off, get the boards out, and take a closer look. Here are the two boards side by side, and it does look like some minor changes have been made. On the left side, the model number and other labels are different. More on that in a minute. Up top, they have taken away this unused mounting location. I wonder what that was originally going to be used for. It looks like they changed manufacturers for both the flash storage as well as the RAM. And finally, these contact points are missing. Or are they? Let's have a look at the other side. Here you can see that unused mounting location again. The biggest change to this side is the addition of this capacitor to the SNES. I'm curious why they made that change. And finally, are these the contact points that were missing from the other side? And now they appear to be labeled as well. Here's a close comparison of the ID labels. Now let's get to the fun part. Can these boards be swapped? First I'll install the NES Classic board in the SNES Classic case. Not surprisingly, everything lines up and fits perfect. All the connections plug right in. The heat sinks are identical. And now I'll put the SNES Classic board in the NES Classic case. Again, no issues fitting this board in the case. And now the moment of truth. I have to admit, while I was pretty confident it would work, there was part of me that was worried I'd be trying to track down replacements for both devices. But it works. Here's the NES Classic running inside the NES Classic shell. All the controls work fine. Next up is the SNES inside the NES Classic shell. Same thing, it all works fine. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this somewhat pointless experiment. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more teardowns like this.